What do you think, Sherman? 16 tons? Some people say a man's made out of mud. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and skin and bone. A man that's weak and a back that's... We're born on the elements of music, of rhythm and tone and harmony. It's just a part of who we are. Whether you can sing a, a folk tune or not, or an aria or not, it doesn't really matter. Said, well, bless my soul. You load 16 tons, and what do you get? Another day older and you're deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can't go. Oh, my soul. To the company store. <laughs> As Tom says, there's music for everyone. <laughs> it, it's another modality for engaging patients, and there is more research that shows that the effect of music on the brain is that it affects the neuroplasticity and it affects the ability of the brain to make new memories and to, um, to recover from stroke or recover from traumatic brain injury. And we see a few people who have actually been discharged from the unit who will know when the music sessions are going to be, and they'll actually come back. I went in Christmas Day, and the music was right outside my door, and I couldn't move in the bed or anything, but I could listen to it, and I could sing from there. The little strength I did have left in me. But I continue to try to get in the wheelchair with the nurses and, and go up and meet the people. Once he started to becoming involved in the group, the group uh, just became so much more animated and so much more lively. It's, uh, it was integral, actually, to the success of, of, of that group. You know, you're laying in there. Like, I'd never seen this snowflake for three months. When I seen the snowflake coming down, God bless me, I was the happiest man in the world. But this the music left in the hospitals, that's the best therapy going is music. Prior to Kevin being discharged, he was at every single music therapy session. Then I got to the hospital, um, I think it was after a weekend, um, and Kevin wasn't there. They said Kevin has been discharged. I went home for lunch. Mm -hmm. Who came driving in my driveway laying on the home? <laughs> and he's like, when's the next music session? Uh -huh. And I said, well, probably in about 45 minutes. He's like, I'll see you there. And I appreciate him for that. It's a working man I am. And I've been down underground And I swore to God if I ever see the sun Or for any length of time I can hold it in my mind I never again will go down underground At the age of 16 years. It's not so direct or, you know, rational even. It's, it's feeling and it, it really speaks to people on all levels. And we all have associations with music. It's very personal and connecting. Staff have made their own song requests at times too, uh, that Tom sometimes tries to learn a song. and. Um, there was one one instance where I think almost everyone, it felt like everyone on the unit that day, including a lot of staff, we all sang together one song, and that was pretty special. Mine was the best dream it was of you. Come tell me, sweet. Sometimes we'll kind of take our toughest patients, and Tom say, well, 
can you go chat with them and see if there's any way we can make a connection with music that we haven't been able to make with some of the other more standard modalities. People have devastating illnesses and sometimes, you know, the standard things that you would do, you can see that they're not working. It helps in those tough cases to try sort of the non-medical or the non-pharmacological approaches. It's one that uh, my dad and my uncles always sing. Most of the music would be, usually it would be generational and it would be songs that they're familiar with. So because of the way music works in the brain, you'll see them experience joy by using music in a way that you don't see because sometimes they're very frustrated with trying to use language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got to uh, Antigonish and then I got in this, uh, and then I noticed that even there they have music. And uh, I really enjoyed that, so I got together with uh, the group. Yeah, it was really, really nice. And uh, being I was French, I started uh, singing French songs. He learned French songs from you. You were the teacher. <laughs> you taught Tom some French songs. Some Can you talk about that process and how that was for you? Well, we got together. He'd come to my room, and then we'd sing together. We'd yeah. sing together. And naturally, I would sing some French songs and some English songs, and mm -hmm. we'd sing both. And you taught him? Oh, yes. Well, yeah, I don't think he knew many French songs. Yeah. They were mm -hmm. sometimes French from Petit de Gras, from mm -hmm. Chatequin, and uh, they would be there in their corner. And the minute you started singing a French song, and then we found out one of them had been in a band. And then that's how music helps, you know, to get together and... Uh, I thought that was great in the hospital. I enjoy being in the hospital. Yeah? Oh, great. <laughs> what did you like about it? What do you well, like about it? Especially that we could see that we could sing. And I think it's important that uh, they do have that therapy. Instead of being alone in the corner mm -hmm. uh, of my bed, mm -hmm. it was a social gathering. Yeah. And any time you get together and sing, naturally it's, naturally it's very good for your morale. You can see it with the patients and you can see when he comes on the floor and the songs that he sings are often songs that we've all heard. Absolutely. And, you know, they, they're they usually happy songs and it does good things. My mother was a patient in St. Martha's Hospital. During her hospital stay, uh, Tom Curry would come to sing and I came to know how the music affected my mother. You could see memories being rekindled on two or three occasions. When Tom was ready to leave, she made a little speech. No. Yes. Wow. She would thank him for coming, mm -hmm. and she, uh, she would speak on behalf of all of them, <laughs> and, and say, we really appreciate what you're doing here. And I'm wondering if you could share, if you can think of a special moment or a special uh, connecting time or a special song that your mother would have experienced and you were able to witness? Oh, I sure can, Stacey. <laughs> Good. <laughs> this happens frequently. You know, when you have somebody with dementia, mm -hmm. uh, they don't remember things, so things kind of get repeated over and over. She realized, she remembered a song that was sung mm -hmm. during the war. Amazing. And he learned the tune of it and so on. And so every day when he was finished, she'd say, now let's sing. Then she got so excited over the song that she started to want to sing it before the session was over. <laughs> but she would say the same thing every time, and this is how the memory works. She would say to him, I don't know why I remember that when I can't remember what happened yesterday. You wave me goodbye. The memory, the memory, the music. Um, it's kind of a special thing, uh, Emily. It's it's special that you know you can remember that moment in 1939. Just as well as yesterday. Yeah. 39. Smile, oh why? You kiss me sad, I do. When the clouds. Roll by, I'll come to you, and then the sky will see more.